Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. Our video for today is about one of our sensory organs, which is our eyes. We will tackle the simple anatomy, physiology, and common disorders that you will encounter in your examinations. So if you're ready, let's start! Let's discuss briefly the anatomy and physiology of our eyes. First are the eyelids. One of the main functions of the eyelid is to protect the eye against foreign elements. In the human eyelids, there is a row of eyelashes that also protect the eyes. Another important function of an eyelid is to moisten the eyes by blinking. Next, the pupil. Its function is to control or regulate the amount of light that is being transmitted in the eyes. The pupil will constrict when there is a bright light, while the pupil will dilate in low light situations. Then we have the iris. It is the pigmented muscle that regulates the amount of light that gets into the eye. The iris uses muscle to change the size of the pupil. These muscles can control the amount of light entering the eye by making the pupil larger or smaller. Sclera The sclera is the white one. It supports the wall of the eyeball as you can see in the lower part of the photo. It helps maintain your eyeball's shape and protects it from injury. The sclera is covered by conjunctiva, which are clear mucous membranes that lubricate your eye. We also have the cornea. The cornea is the transparent part of the eye that covers the front portion of the eye. The cornea controls the light that enters the eye for vision. It also provides approximately 65 to 75 percent of the focusing power of the eye. Lens. The lens is a curved structure in the eye that bends light and focuses it on the retina to help us see an image clearly. Ciliary body The ciliary body produces fluid in the eye called aqueous humor. It flows between the lens and the cornea and provides nutrients. The ciliary body muscles also help the eyes to focus on a close object. This process is called accommodation. Retina The purpose of the retina is to receive light that the lens has focused, convert the light into neural signals, and send these signals to the brain for visual recognition. The retina processes a picture from the focused light and the brain is left to decide what the picture is. Choroid It is a thin layer of tissue that is made up of almost blood vessels that supply oxygen and nutrients to the outer part of the retina. We also have vitreous humor. It helps support the shape of the eye and transmits light to the retina. Finally is the optic nerve. It is the second cranial nerve that carries sensory nerve impulses from more than 1 million ganglion cells of the retina toward the visual centers in the brain. If you want a discussion about the 12 cranial nerves, you can check this link after this video or you can also check it in the description below. Let's now proceed to the common disorders that was frequently asked in your examinations. The first disorder is glaucoma. It is a condition that damages the optic nerve. It is often linked to a buildup of pressure in your eye. The increased pressure in your eye, called intraocular pressure, can damage your optic nerve. If the damage worsens, 
it can lead to permanent blindness. The normal intraocular pressure or eye pressure is 10 to 21 millimeters of mercury. What are the causes? First, there is a blockage or overproduction of aqueous humor. The fluid in your eye is called aqueous humor. It usually flows out of your eye through a mesh-like channel called the trabecular meshwork. If it is blocked or the eye is producing too much fluid, the fluid builds up causing an increase in pressure. The blockage is also sometimes inherited. Other less common causes are blunt or chemical injury, severe eye infection, or inflammatory conditions. Let's now proceed to key manifestations. Glaucoma is often called sneak teeth of vision because if symptoms have developed, it is usually late. Common symptoms include loss of peripheral vision. It is also known as the tunnel vision. Seeing halos around lights. We can also have eye pain. Finally, is peripheral to central blindness that can lead to total blindness if not detected early. Diagnostics. The most common test to measure the IOP is tonometry. Another diagnostic procedure to examine the optic nerve for glaucoma damage is ophthalmoscopy. Management. Medications include myotic or cholinergic agents like pilocarpine. These increase the outflow of fluid, thereby reducing the eye pressure. Another one is beta blockers. This reduces the production of fluid or aqueous humor in your eye, thus lowering the intraocular pressure. Lastly is the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors like acetazolamide. It reduces the production of fluid or aqueous humor. Final management is laser therapy. It is also called laser trabeculoplasty. It is done to open the clog or block channels in the trabecular meshwork. The next disorder is retinal detachment. It is a serious eye condition that occurs when your retina pulls away or detaches from the tissue around it. Retinal detachment separates the retinal cells from the layer of blood vessels that provides oxygen and nourishment. The longer the retinal detachment goes untreated, the greater the risk of permanent vision loss to the affected eye. Causes Retinal degeneration or due to aging Extreme nearsightedness Trauma or severe eye injury and previous eye surgery like cataract removal. Key manifestations Flashes of light Floating spots or floaters and a curtain-like shadow over your visual field. You can check the photos. Management Laser or freezing are methods to repair a tear if it's diagnosed early. Scleral buckling In this surgery, a surgeon attaches a piece of silicone or sponge onto the white of the eye at the spot of a retinal tear. Finally, is the cataract. It is a congenital or degenerative clouding of the lens. It is also commonly called the opacity of the lens. It develops slowly and eventually interferes with your vision. Causes? The most common is due to aging. 
We also have patients with certain disease like diabetes or hypertension, trauma, congenital, key manifestations, blurred or hazy vision, a cloudy or white pupil, and there is photosensitivity. Diagnostics, ophthalmoscopy. This is done by dilating the pupil and assessing for the presence of red reflex. Small cataracts stand out as dark defects, while large cataracts may obliterate the red reflex. In short, for a patient with cataracts, there is no red reflex upon the examination. We also have slit lump examination. It is used to see the structures at the front of your eye under magnification. The microscope is called the slit lump because it uses an intense line of light, a slit, to illuminate your cornea, iris, and lens. Let's now proceed to the management. We only have surgery. First is the intracapsular cataract extraction or the ICCE. In this procedure, the opacified lens is removed completely with its capsule. Next is extracapsular cataract extraction. The affected lens is removed leaving the elastic capsule to allow implantation of the intraocular lens. Finally, is the phaco emulsification. It is the most common cataract surgery. It is done by inserting a small ultrasonic probe that breaks the cloudy lens into tiny fragments. The fragments are then suctioned out of the capsule. Finally, an intraocular lens implant will be done. Thank you for listening. I hope you learn and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.